Dear students, in the last class, we discussed about the transition probabilities for IR and Raman spectra by applying principles of group theory. In this presentation, let's discuss the applications of group theory in electronic spectroscopy. We know that molecules have many types of energy like rotational energy, vibrational energy, electronic energy, nuclear energy, etc. All these energy levels are quantized and the transitions taking place among the energy levels in the presence of electromagnetic radiation lead to various spectra. In electronic spectroscopy, electronic transitions involve exciting an electron from one energy state or quantum state to another by absorbing energy in the UV visible region. And obviously, these energy levels are quantized. Once a molecule is excited to a higher energy state, it will relax back to its original more stable state and in that process release energy as photos. So this is the basic principle of electronic spectroscopy. Now when the molecule absorbs ultraviolet or visible radiation that corresponds to the excitation of valence electrons or outer electrons. Generally, there are three types of electronic transitions which can be considered. The first one is the transitions involving pi, sigma and n electrons. N is a non-bonding. So here in, the, in this image, you can see different types of transitions like n pi star, pi pi star, n sigma star, etc. So these are generally found in organic bounds. The second type is the transitions involving charge transfer electrons. We have studied about charge transfer transitions seen in many inorganic complexes involving ligand to metal and metal to ligand charge transfer transitions. And then as the transitions involving D and F electrons you might have heard about it also like a DD transitions or FF transitions usually seen in many coordination compounds and many DD transitions are responsible for the color of the coordination compounds. So these three are common types of electronic transitions found in molecules. However, not all transitions are spectroscopically allowed. Which transitions are allowed or not is determined by certain quantum mechanical rules known as selection rules. So generally there are three selection rules. One is the orbital selection rule which states that the total orbital angular momentum change should be 0 or plus or minus 1. That is delta j equals 0 or plus or minus 1 where j is the total orbital angular momentum. Next is the spin selection rule. It states that the total spin cannot change or delta s is equal to 0 where s is the spin quantum number. Since the electron spin is a magnetic effect, electronic transitions which are electric dipole transitions will not alter the electron spin and hence the spin multiplicity 2s plus 1 should not change during the electronic dipole transition. And the last one is Laporte selection rule or parity selection rule which states that transitions between states of same parity are forbidden. So these are the selection rules in electronic spectroscopy which determines whether a transition is spectroscopically allowed or not. 
Now, our focus is on how to apply the principles of group theory in determining these selection rules. For that, let's see what is transition probability. The transition probability is defined as the probability of particular spectroscopic transition to take place. And this depends on two things. One is the nature of the initial and final state wave functions. That is the lower energy state and the higher energy state. Secondly, how strongly photons interact with an energy state. Now, if the frequency of the induced electric or magnetic moment is the same as the energy difference between the two states, Xi1 and Xi2, the interaction between an atom or molecule and the electromagnetic field is in resonance. That means both have the same frequency. And the amplitude of this electric or magnetic moment is called the transition moment or transition dipole moment. In quantum mechanics, the basis for a spectroscopic selection rule is the value of an integral called the transition moment integral, which is given as mfi is equal to integral xi i mu xi f into d2, where xi i and xi f are the wave functions associated with the initial and the final states respectively and mu is the transition moment or transition dipole moment or electric dipole moment operator. Mu which is the electric dipole moment operator resolves into three components mu x, mu y and mu z which represents the three directions x, y and z. Now, if the value of this integral mfi is equal to integral psi i mu psi f d2, if the value of this integral is 0, then the transition is forbidden. And if it is non-zero, then it is an allowed transition. So, in electronic spectroscopy, the value of the transition moment integral determines whether a transition is allowed or forbidden. Now, let's see how to determine these selection rules using group theory. The first step is determine the symmetry of the transition moment function. So, transition moment function means the components including the initial state wave function xi, the final state wave function xi f and the electric dipole moment operator mu. So, we have to determine the symmetry of this function. If the symmetry of this function spans the totally symmetric representation of the point group to which the atom or molecule belongs, then its value is not zero and the transition is allowed, else the transition is forbidden. Now, the symmetry of the transition moment function is the direct product of its parities of the three components, that is xi i mu xi f. The direct product of xi i into mu into xi f will give you the symmetry of the transition moment function. And if that symmetry belongs to the total symmetric representation of a point group, that is a1, then the value of the integral is not zero and the transition will be an allowed one. We can obtain the symmetry characteristics of each component from the standard character tables. So first we will discuss about orbital selection rule. As I said earlier, the value of the transition moment integral mfi is equal to integral xi i mu k psi f into d2 represents or determines whether a transition is allowed or not. Now this is formulated in the form of orbital selection rule which states that an electronic transition between two states will be allowed only if the direct product of the representations of the initial state, final state and 
the electric dipole moment is equal to an irreducible representation which is totally symmetric that is a1 representation the electric dipole moment operator mu resolves into three components mu x mu y and mu z and hence the symmetry characteristics of the dipole moment or transition moment operator mu spans over the cartesian coordinates x y and z so we can formulate the orbital selection rule like this that is an electronic transition between two states will be allowed only if the direct product of the representations of the two states that is the initial state and the final state spans a symmetric species which is the same as that of x y or z in that group since mu spans over the symmetry characteristics of the cartesian coordinates x y or z to be more clear let's see an example let's take the example of water molecule which belongs to c2v point group consider the ground state configuration of h2o it can be written as 1a12 2a12 1b22 3a12 1b12 2b20 4a10 the symmetry of the ground state is obtained by the direct products a1 into a1 into a1 into a1 into b2 into b2 a1 into a1 into b1 into b1 all the electrons are paired up so we have written the direct products like this so the direct product of all these representations will give you the symmetry of the ground state which is a totally symmetric representation a1 b2 into b2 will give you a1 so here also b1 into b1 will also give a1 so total symmetry will be a1 now let's consider the transition from 1 b1 to 2 b2 so the excited state configuration can be written as 1 a1 to 2 a1 to 1 b2 to 3 a1 to 1 b1 1 and 2 b2 1 we can find the symmetry of the excited state by finding the direct products that is a1 into a1 into a1 into a1 b2 into b2 a1 into a1 and finally only one electron in 1 b1 and 2 b2 so b1 into b2 which is equal to a1 into b1 into b2 so we have to find the direct product of a1 into b1 into b2 so from the character table we can obtain the characters for a1 which is 1 1 1 1 into b1 1 Minus one, one minus one. That is written here into B two. One minus one minus one, one. So one into one into one will give one. One into minus one into minus one. So one. One into one into minus one, which will give minus one. And finally, one into minus one into one again minus one. so the character will be 1 1 1 1 minus one. if we look at the character table these character 1 1 1 minus one minus one corresponds to a2 symmetry therefore the symmetry of the excited state is a2 now we have to find out the direct product of the two wave functions psi i and psi f that is the direct product of the ground state and the excited state the ground state is totally symmetric so a1 into the excited state symmetry is a2 a1 into a2 will give you a2 according to orbital selection rule for a transition to be allowed the direct product xi i into psi f must span a symmetry species which is same as that of any of the cartesian coordinates x y or z which corresponds to the dipole moment operator if you look at the character table it can be seen that 
x, y and z span respectively b1, b2 and a1. That means no dipole moment components spans a2. This means that 1b1 to 2b2 transition in water molecule is a forbidden transition. Now let's consider the 1b1 to 4a1 transition. The excited state configuration can be written as 1a1 to 2a1 to 1b2 to 3a1 to 1b11 and 4a11. 2b2 is vacant. Now write the symmetry of the excited state. a1 into a1 into a1 into a1 into b2 into b2 into a1 into a1 into the last two b1 into a1. So, you will get the symmetry of the excited state as B1. Now, find the direct product of the two states, ground state and excited state. That is A1 into B1, which is B1. The direct product is I into Psi F, therefore, spans B1 symmetry. Now, from the character table for C2V point group, it can be seen that the coordinate X and hence, the dipole moment component mu x spans b1. Thus, we can say that the transition from 1b1 to 4a1 is an allowed transition. And this is confirmed by the fact that a single band is found in the electronic spectrum of water at about 170 nanometers.